It also concerns us that your actions may have been motivated by your family's financial stake in this issue. Published reports show that, show that your son-in-law co-founded a company called Panorama Education. We now know that that company publishes and sells critical race theory and so-called anti-racism materials to schools across the country. And it works with school districts nationwide to obtain and analyze data on students, often without parental consent. On its website, the company brags that it's surveyed more than 13 million students in the U.S. It's raised $76 million from powerful investors, including people like Mark Zuckerberg, just since 2017. My first question is this. Are you familiar with Title V of the Code of Federal Regulations, which addresses the rules of impartiality for executive branch employees and officials? I am very familiar with it, and I want to be clear once again that there's nothing in this memorandum which has any effect on the kinds of curriculums that are taught or the ability of parents to complain about the kinds of... I under, understand your position on, on the free speech of parents. Position, it, it is wait, wait just a minute. The, the question is, the question is, the thing that has concerned many of those parents that are showing up at these school board meetings, the, the, the very basis of their objection and their vigorous debate, as you mentioned earlier, is the curricula, the very curricula that your son-in-law is selling. So to millions of Americans, I mean, my constituents, I was home all weekend, I got an earful about this. They're very concerned about that. Subpart E of that federal regulation says an employee of the executive branch is discouraged from encouraging con enc engaging in conduct that's likely to affect the financial interest of someone close to them. Your, your son-in-law, your daughter, uh, clearly meets that definition. And, and so the question is, uh, did, did you follow that regulation? Did you have the appropriate agency ethic official look into this? Did you seek guidance as the federal regulation requires? This memorandum is aimed at violence and threats of violence. I understand there that, but no did, did you seek, excuse me, did you seek ethics counsel before you issued a letter that directly relates to the financial interest of your family? Yes or no? This memorandum does not relate to the financial interests of anyone. It's a th it's against. I take violence. that as a no. I take that as a no. Memorandum is against violence and threats of violence. I will, don't know. will you, Mr. Attorney General, will you commit to having the appropriate ethics designee review the case and make the results public? This memorandum is aimed at violence and threats of violence. I understand your talking point. You're not answering my question, not Mr. Attorney General. Point, With all due respect, will you submit to an ethics review of this matter, yes or no? There is no company in America or hopefully no law-abiding citizen in America who believes that threats of violence should not be prevented. There are no conflicts of interest that anyone could have. According to you, but sir, with due respect, that's the purpose of the federal regulation. We need objective third parties to review our activities. You don't get to make that decision yourself. It doesn't matter. You're the top, you're the chief law enforcement of this country. This raises questions in the minds of millions of Americans, and your impartiality is being called into question. Why would you not submit to a simple ethics review of that? I am exquisitely aware of the ethics requirements. But you're not following them. I have followed them and lived with them for the last 25 years. Did you seek an ethics review of this or not? I'm going to say again, there are no conflicts of interest involved when the Justice Department... Okay, okay. According to you, I got that. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but you are not respecting our rules, our constitutional norms, and the federal law that directly applies to your activities. This is a great concern. This is why people are losing faith in our institutions. They're losing faith in this Department of Justice. And you and I both know, as constitutional attorneys, that if, if the people lose their faith in our system of justice, if they lose their faith in the idea that justice is blind, that they're not two standards, that there's one standard of the law, and that everybody- Time of the gentleman to... has expired. Would the Attorney General like to respond to the innuendo? No, I, all I can say is I completely agree that the rule of law and respect for it is essential. And uh, I will always do everything possible to uphold that and to avoid any kind of conflict of interest. But you will not submit to an ethics Time inquiry. of the gentleman has expired. Well, it, I would just point Time out of the gentleman has expired. It wasn't expired. innuendo, it was a question. Thank you. It was a question. Thank the question is, the, is, is the editorial the comments of, from the chair about other the, people's the, questions is not appreciated by this General. side of the aisle. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news 
for Real People.